So today we're going to do a little bit of testing, uh, try and see what difference, if any, is measurable using a saddle pressure mapper and seeing if a rocker plate will actually make a difference in loading of the sit bones and soft tissue when the rocking motion is present or when it's not. So essentially trying to compare what the difference between a fully rigid trainer setup is and a rocker plate based one so that we can see if that has any impact on uh, the pressure that we feel on the saddle. Um, I'll show you the setup here on the trainer so you can see we're basically going to be starting from more or less a rigid setup, adding a little more flexibility a couple steps at a time until we get to a setup that's as loose and, and free to move as what I use in my typical setup. Uh, today we're using the Trek uh, Precision Fit System with their style pressure mapping software and essentially we've got a Wi-Fi pad on here. The screen will show live update of pressure as it changes from position to position on the saddle and we'll also be able to record that and then contrast uh, one set versus another and actually watch them uh, replayed side by side so that you can see the difference between each of the different settings. Uh, so I'll show you a setup of what the trainer looks like right now in terms of how the rocker plate is set up and then we'll move on to the testing. So we've got one of my older style rocker plates here, and at the moment I've got wood shims uh, squared up on all four corners so that the trainer itself is fully rigid and effectively as if it was mounted onto a rigid floor. What we'll be doing initially is getting that baseline, and then once we have that baseline as far as the saddle pressure mapping, I'll be removing the wooden blocks so that then that frees up the rocker to move but I have the rocker set up with uh, the low pressure that I normally use is where we're going to end up with these little inflatable balls. But I also have foam uh, in each of the four corners that is semi-stiff. It's not super light, but it's also not super movable. So that'll be kind of uh, the first step is going to be the rigid. We'll include all of the foam as a second step. Uh, remove one or two sets of the foam to kind of free the rocker up a little bit beyond that. And then ultimately the final test will be having just the inflatable balls in here so that those are the only uh, support for rocking motion. And hopefully see if we can capture any of the differences in terms of what happens when the motion is added at different steps to see if it makes any difference in the saddle pressure loading. Okay, so this is rocker plate fully rigid and we'll be basically getting a baseline here to start off with. Get the pressure map are working. Settle into position on the saddle. Get recorded. Captures for about five seconds. And then we have video we can play back in terms of pressure on there. And then that'll also capture some high and low values. We'll simply record what that is and then continue on testing the next one. And what we'll do also here is we're going to go ahead and capture twice when we do the saddle pressure mapping. Uh, I just like to have two to compare and make sure you have consistent results. So we've got the first one on there for the rigid setup. I'll be doing a second one now. And we'll be two and two for each of the other tests as well. Just to try and make sure we get consistent data in comparison. Settle in on the saddle. And the neat thing we can do with this to kind of cross check is we can actually load up two side by side and then play them back and see if we have overall consistent results. And pressure values and positioning looks pretty consistent on that. And I'll be using the hoods each time, landing essentially at the same position so that we have the same sit bone loading. So I've now removed all the wooden shims that I had at all four corners of the rocker plate, effectively freeing it up. And the springs that are in place are all four have large and small foam springs, as well as the two center inflatable balls. So this is uh, rocker motion in place, but as um, stiff as it can be essentially with the current setup.
first test capture. And up and reset. We'll reactivate the mapper and do another recording. And that's two captures of the rocker in its full stiff setting. So we just completed the stiff setting, which was all springs in place on the rocker. Uh, now I have removed the small foam springs that were underneath the middle of the front section. So we've gone to essentially what I'm calling a medium setting. That's the first one done. And second one done on the medium setting. All right, so I've now removed the large springs that were towards the rear of the rocker. And effectively, we are now at the lightest setting with just the inflatable balls that are mounted roughly in the middle of the front spacer section. So this is the lightest setting test. It's a lot easier to lean. After loaded. Kind of a little tougher time balancing at this lightest setting. And try not to get too crazy with the rocking action. And there's two at the light setting. All right, so what we're looking at here is the test results that we did. So we did four settings, uh, rigid rocker, stiff rocker, medium rocker, and light rocker with two tests each for a total of eight. And the first thing we're gonna do is just try and compare by selecting the first two rigid rocker tests one and two and see if the results look fairly consistent just based on body position and overall uh, distribution of pressure. And they look pretty similar. So then let's go to stiff rocker test one and two and see if those are consistent. And they look quite comparable. And then we need to switch between two pages to grab the medium rocker test one and two. So we've got one and two there. Pretty darn consistent, and we'll diagnose these uh, a little bit closer here in a minute, but just making sure that we have consistent results on uh, position and everything there. And then the last one for initial standardization is the light rocker. A little bit of variation in there, but overall pretty consistent. So uh, first thing to compare then potentially is grab any one of the rigid and the stiff rocker. So we have rigid on the left, stiff on the right. And initially we can see that we have some differences in pressure. So looking at this, obviously we have the silhouette of the um, seat with the pressure mapper. And a couple of things to start looking at is that the red line is essentially the line between the two major pressure areas showing whether we have symmetry or not. Uh, if that line's angled one way or the other, that means you're a little crooked. And as you can see here, I'm a little crooked on this one. The other things to look at, of course, is the pressure. And we start with black is no pressure, blue is light pressure, and it increases as we go lighter, where green to yellow to red are the highest pressure zones. 
So typically as you get to the warmer color scheme towards the red side of life, that usually means high pressure and generally uh, discomfort. So in this case, one of the things we can look at is we can also see that basically the high pressure points are also indicated by these three locations, uh, in this case only two on this side. And one of the first things to notice compared to the rigid rocker here, we have a 400 peak on this point, and I honestly don't know what the units are, but whatever it is, we can basically see that on the right, where we've now switched the rocker to active, it's in the stiff setting, that is roughly three quarters of that value, 272 versus 403. If we look at the right side now of the rigid rocker, we can see a 671 peak, and we can see these colors starting to turn a little bit green. If we move to this side over here, uh, same side of the saddle, obviously, uh, we can see that our peak value is almost half. It's about 55% just ballparking of a 374 peak versus a 671. Uh, so that's one of the first indications potentially that the rocker plate may be allowing some motion in there. Uh, let's just see. So this is from test one to test one. Let's go ahead and compare rigid two to stiff two and see what we see. Uh, on the left side, we're 208 for a peak to 278, so actually the inverse of what we just saw in the last test. On the left, uh, pardon me, right side, we've got 464 to a 279, so again, about three quarter higher uh, or three quarter lower on the right where it's higher on this. So rigid rocker showing somewhat higher. Uh, also note the similarities between the horizontal we had here and a slight angle for whatever reason on this one. So if we compare back rigid to rigid, we can see that that line between the two sit bones is roughly flat. Between the two stiff ones, we're actually getting some angle. So it's possible that uh, either I don't have the rocker level or just through the motion um, that has been added in the stiff setting. I'm now getting a slight dis, uh, change in position of where my sit bones are and that direction between them. But note that in general, uh, if we compare first to first again, we're higher pressure on the rigid and the second to second. Again, mostly higher. There's a, a little bit of a flip-flop here where this one's higher, but our peak is significantly lower. Uh, also note here, we kind of ignored this on the first one, but we have a 43 in this midsection for pressure versus 90, so that's interesting. And again, it may lean towards some changes in position. Let's recheck that rigid, stiff on test one. Uh, this one's got a number and this one doesn't, so kind of inconclusive there. So let's go back. Let's do rigid to the medium rocker, both on test one. And again, initially we have 403 to a 235 on that side, so lower with the rocker in motion. 671 to 330, so half the pressure there. Let's go ahead and animate this. And we can see that we're getting the brighter colors, the higher pressure on the left side with the rigid rocker versus the medium rocker. So let's see if that holds true for both of the test twos. So we're rigid test two to medium test two. Same basic trend, horizontal line here we've seen and a slight angular line here. Our pressure is in this case, similar to the test two and the other comparison. Uh, interestingly, this is slightly higher. I would almost call those equal, uh, but we are slightly higher here on the right side versus that. It's not as dramatic as the test one comparison between rigid and medium motion. But we'll go ahead and play that animation and look at that. So again, seeing higher pressures on here, motion looks to be pretty consistent between the two. And again, looking at them stopped, we're basically pretty similar position, if anything, slightly forward on the saddle there. So rigid test one against the lightest setting. And we have a 403 again we've seen before, 261 on the left side, 671 versus a 342. So fairly consistently going to be lower on the right side with the rocker in motion. Uh, notice the hugely different uh, position of where this red line is. Uh, it's no longer centered over top of this. And I didn't point this out before because basically there's these horizontal lines. So that means that the weight distribution is staying fairly horizontal left to right. Notice that with the rocker in full loose motion where I was actually having trouble balancing, all of these squiggle lines are essentially the middle point of our pressure. And if we animate this, 
we'll see this red line bouncing, uh, red dot rather, bouncing around a fair bit where, I didn't mention it before, but basically we're simply ping-ponging back and forth between the left and right on the rigid rocker, whereas the fully loose and light rocker is having my position much more um, dynamic and flexible. Uh, the pressures are significantly lower in general, so 60 to 70% here, nearly half on this. Let's take a look at the test two for rigid test two, light test two. Again, we see the same basic thing. We have slightly higher in test two for whatever reason, always on the left, uh, and then actually higher on this one. So we can see my positioning is a lot more dynamic again based on the location of those dots and more pressure here. So we'll animate this. Again, ping-ponging here. This one's kind of swinging in a big triangle, bouncing all over the place. So definitely felt less stable in the light rocker setting, and the saddle mapper is kind of coinciding with that. And in fact, showing higher pressure. Uh, for the sake of comparison, just to see the difference between the two light settings, let's look at that a little closer. And we can see that same pattern that we have with the squiggles all over and a significant difference in the pressure for sure on the right side. So that may well be a positioning problem I was having, either leaning the bike or just getting centered on the saddle. Pressures are roughly in the same spot, so I'm inclined to think it was me leaning off center because of the light setting. So pretty interesting. Uh, if we go back now and just compare... Let's do rigid one to light one one more time. Take a look at that again. We've got the lower peaks on the high motion, but a lot more dynamic uh, motion and positioning on the light rocker setting. I definitely felt less stable there. And rocker rigid two, and then light two, like that back. So for the sake of comparison, let's just now take a quick look at stiff rocker versus medium rocker and see if we can tell any difference. Um, pretty darn close in both of the settings. We can see that the pressures are a little higher on the stiff setting. They are a little lower on the medium. We'll go ahead and play that dynamic and watch that. Fairly stable, but notably um, lower pressures than the rigids. And these two look awfully similar other than the slight numeric differences. Let's compare stiff rocker two, medium rocker two, and we can see higher pressures consistently. I guess it's a mix. So we're higher with a 278 versus 194 on the left. On the right side, we're 279 versus 345. So a little bit of a flip-flop there. For whatever reason, the test twos all seem to do that. Might well have been my positioning on the saddle. Play that back, but we get basically the same left-right, more or less straight distribution between the stiff setting and the medium setting. So pretty similar. And then if we go medium now, comparing to the light, this is where we're going to see a decent difference. Pressures are close, but actually higher uh, on the light setting. Uh, we can also see too, didn't mention this the first time through, but the light setting seems to have me moving a little more. You can see the pressure is significantly higher in the middle of the saddle. Uh, again, probably an indicator that I was having trouble staying stable on the saddle due to the large amount of movement. And then let's go back and compare medium rocker two and light rocker two. And this is where we've got lower settings across the board on the medium versus the light. So just based on this, the medium setting seems to be kind of superior in terms of reducing uh, pressure, especially compared to rigid, but also actually being better than the light setting. So uh, may go ahead and retest just to get a couple more, um, go back to the original settings and run through for a third time on each one and see if I get consistent results to the others. All right, so now we're back to resetting fully rigid, essentially testing a third time just to validate results from the first round of testing and see if we can find a preference. But basically we've got the fully rigid four post in there and all the springs installed just as I did for the first test.
get the mapper activated. And in position and move forward. So quickly remove the four locks. So now we're back to the stiff setting with the four blocks removed. Motion is obviously present, but it's relatively controlled. Simply remove the foam springs from the front, so we've got the inflatable balls in the front and the springs in the rear, the foam ones. This is the medium setting. Large springs removed from the rear, and so we just have the inflatable balls in there, so it's at its light setting. Far more motion. And then see the lean. See if I can get balanced. And record. All right, we've just completed the third set of tests on everything, effectively resetting the rocker back to its original. Uh, we're going to compare right, rigid rocker test one to rigid rocker test three to see if those results are consistent. Uh, pretty similar, a little bit of differential on both of these, but that's kind of to be understood. Play that back. Got nice horizontal ping pong positions but our pressures are in the six and 700 range on one side and three to four on the other. So if we go back in and let's compare stiff rocker test one to stiff rocker test three, uh, similar shift in terms of angles a little bit. This one's got a little more movement going on there. Pressures uh, were actually higher on the third test. Uh, actually for kicks, I wanna grab stiff test two and oops to stiff test three to compare and yeah we're lower here and higher on this so stiff rocker test three is a little bit higher a little bit more motion slightly more vertical going on on the test three there overall pretty close but a little more variation on that third test on that one so let's see what we get on medium rocker test one against medium rocker test three. Uh, pretty close, again, higher pressure the second go around with this one. Motion's a little more erratic, so I may have been not positioned on the saddle quite the same spot. The peak pressures are roughly in the same spot, but we can see there's a lot more variation taking place and movement going on there. So. Due to positioning of the springs, I may not have had them matched up or it simply could have been my variation there. So a little bit of variability in the third test. And if we wanna compare light rocker one to light rocker three, whoops, uh, let's look at the statics first. Um, all sorts of craziness again, we've got the squiggles going on in the middle. Pressures aren't too high, but as a general rule, it seems for whatever reason, the third test is showing higher numbers in general and our little red dot is floating all over showing changes in center of pressure so pretty decent variability uh, but if we compare 
like to like. Let's go ahead and grab Rigid Rocker Test 3. Oops, actually, I want to stay right there. Rigid to stiff. And again, we typically see by going from fully rigid to some motion with the stiff setting, uh, pressures tend to reduce. Um, small amount here on the left, pretty significant on the right. And uh, motion direction still looks fairly controlled, but the pressures are lower. So it seems to be, as a general rule, the stiff rocker setting, once you've added motion, uh, lowers those pressures. I'll try and document these and get them in a table and be a little easier to compare later, but quick review, that looks pretty good. So for test three, then kind of moving, we've got rigid three versus medium three. And we have, of course, the same pressures we had the first time through there, so slightly less on the left, uh, more drop on the right. This is the medium, so it was pretty controlled in the first two tests, but this one's a little more all over. But again, roughly reset, these two are comparable. Obviously got a little more up and down motion there. But medium rocker compared to rigid is also lower. And go to the end again. Oops. Rigid rocker three versus light rocker three and we actually have lower pressures here, a um, lot more movement and whether that's good or bad, I don't honestly know at this stage. It's just interesting. And of course, one of the claims that I and others have made is that rockers um, give motion and decrease pressure, uh, and typically increasing saddle comfort. And as we've seen, the pressures tend to reduce, but also the location for that pressure, uh, especially on a light rocker, uh, may lead to uh, allowing the bike to shift a lot more underneath you, more like we have outside, so there's less static pressure on there. Um, with these, it's pretty repetitive based on every time we've done the rigid test, the pressures are pretty darn similar. Uh, just to confirm that, let's compare rigid 2 to rigid 3. And rigid 2 was kind of the low test. In fact, the two tests on most of them was the lowest, but this one here is pretty darn good compared to the 1 and the 3, for instance. So let's compare those, rigid 1 and rigid three, and these are pretty darn similar. So we'll go back and then let's compare stiff rocker one, two, stiff rocker three, uh, slightly higher across the board here for three. We'll do medium rocker one to medium rocker three still higher on this one, so it seems like test three is proving to be higher more or less across the board. And then the last one we want light rocker one to light rocker three. And again, slightly higher, but pretty similar. And we'll just play that back. So quick conclusions, again, going back to pretty much any, we can take two seems to be the best case rigid rocker, and I don't remember on this stiff, but we'll just compare those. The pressures are obviously higher, and we can see that peak. The motion is almost identical in terms of the left to right motion between both of them, but the pressures are significantly lower, uh, I would say, for, well, it's, I guess this is the split one, that's why I wanted this, is we have higher on this side, lower here, versus the rigid. And some of this, too, may come simply from the capture time where we're doing five seconds and roughly 90 cadence, so how many ever cycles that is per side. Okay, so just to do some final data gathering, I want to capture the uh, more detailed info of each one of the settings. So we're going to do these in pairs based on the common elements and then we can cross-reference the data later. Uh, so we're going to capture rigid rocker 1 and 2 test. And we've seen these numbers. We're looking from the top view. We can also look at it from the rear view and see the differences there between those peak pressures versus not. Side view. Just taking a look at those images and then some of the summary data for each one of those. So we'll capture that for each pair essentially. Revert back. Now we're going to go stiff rocker one and two. Default data from the top. From the back. 
Interesting here how that's a little more balanced. Again, lower pressure on the number two. And then summary data. Now we're going to do medium rocker one and two. Top view. Rear view. Side view. And summary data for medium rocker one and two. Now we want light one and two, top view, rear view, side view, and summary data. Then we can go to the test three items. So we have rigid rocker three, stiff rocker three, top view, rear view, side view, summary data. So we've done the rigid and stiff rockers on three. We now want medium and light. Top view. Rear view. Side view. And summary data. And all of these were taken on the same bike with the same exact saddle. Uh, specialized toupee, uh, expert I think, tie rail saddle with a small gel, and a 155 millimeter width.